What's going on guys? Vic VP back with another Game Case Arcades video. I'm calling it guys. The budget beast. Morris's bar top PC hyperspin build six terabyte drive is officially done. Yes, you heard it right, guys. I looked at it. I bought the parts for this back in March. So, yes, it's been three months. I am calling it. This is officially done. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, guys, because I do post a lot of my Instagram stories. You would see, if you've been following me, again, at Vic underscore VP, you would have seen every single video I've made about this thing. Um, again, it did take three months to build, but keep in mind that i only been, like, actually working on it every day for about maybe two or three hours a night because I do work on this after work. So keep that in mind. Yes, it did take some time, but I made a deal with Morris as he is the first ever to get a PC inside of a bar top. Yes, people do make these things, but this is my personal first and I'm just so proud of it. I don't even want to give it to Morris, but he's going to take it. Let's take a closer look. But before anything, you know, I did it. We shot a promo video. So now we're gonna make a couple of videos out of this, okay? A lot of stuff. I mean, I'm gonna load up, we're gonna show you what the boot looks like, how to turn this thing on, the ins and outs, and we're also gonna break down each emulator, basically each system and everything. So you're gonna see a lot of videos coming up with this budget beast. I am done, we are officially done. I packed this as much as I could, but the performance out of this thing is unbelievable. Last night I was running Wii U, um, Super Mario World 3D World. I was blown away. I think I even was able to get a couple of the emulators running in 4K uh, 60 uh, FPS. I'm even blown away by this. Let's put the camera down. Let's take a closer look. Just on this one today, we're going to take a look at the actual just build itself, boot up and all that, and I'm going to show you the insides and out. Again, a lot of videos coming this way, basically kind of highlighting the budget beast bar top. All right, guys, so again, this episode right here, we're going to look at just an overview what's inside this thing what does this thing do and we're going to do real quick a boot and a shutdown i'm going to flip the camera around because you guys don't like self mode but again this episode right here just an overview we're going to also try to bring you up higher because of the screen but let's start so real quick i have the arcade powered on i'm going to turn off my shop lights only because you do see the glare but i just want to show you guys this one big thing on the top of the arcade we have our power switch, okay? So real quick, I know this is really supposed to be the last thing, but I just wanna show you real quick, with a simple push of a button, the computer will shut down. So there is a dedicated power button. You, you could even, while playing the game, if you press that button, the computer itself will shut down. We are running an extension cord on this. You can check it out here. In the back, you can see my past videos of the modification of the back door. Right now, in all honesty, this right now is considered off. The LEDs and the screen is still powered on, so we're gonna actually start all the way from the beginning as if Morris is gonna bring this home, and we're gonna start from there. So real quick again, we're gonna start. Basically, no power going to this. I have an extension cord only because the power strip cord is too short. Basically, once Morris plugs this in, gonna plug it in LEDs will turn on and also the fans in the back will turn on for a quick second indicating that there is power going to the computer let's give it a couple of seconds and real quick all we got to do the screen will power on again that is because of the power strip but real quick you just give it one button and you will see the fans turn on showing you that yes the power is on to the PC the computer right now will do its thing and it will boot up 
I really don't want to do any cuts on this. So real quick, I mean, I didn't put a stop clock to this, but we'll take a look as far as Premiere Pros. PC is booting. I do have this set for Hyperspin to automatically boot after one minute, uh, thanks to Task Manager. Check this out. We got a little nice Yoga uh, Yoda and Darth Vader background, Game Case Arcades. Again, the main objective to this is that you put the computer on, you turn it on, you leave it alone. Okay, there will be a mouse and a keyboard for Mars. So we're gonna look at the accessories later on. But the biggest thing right now is to just let it do its thing. Okay, we even went, I even went to the extent making him his own custom desktop artwork. Yes, I do my Photoshop skills. Not really skills, it's pretty amateur, but we got Moe's Arcade. We got this, and again, yes. So again, we have this set. For one minute, Task Manager will boot up Hyperspin on its own. We're gonna turn up the volume knob up here just so you could hear it. But again, right now, I'm not touching anything. The desktop will stay there for one minute, okay? I might be configuring it to be two minutes only because there is some stuff in the background that needs to load. For example, the biggest thing is the G-Force, there it is. One minute. Now, in all honesty, I do not want to skip this little cutscene. I'd rather you not, I could actually put a setting to it, but I didn't change the setting. You could essentially skip the cutscene, but it's always good to let the cutscene go. As you can see real quick, there was a loading screen right there for the GeForce GTX 1050 Ti. Again, check this out. It's gonna boot. Gonna take a little bit because again, there is so much still loading in the background. That's why it might be, there you go. Now we're considered up and running, joysticks work. That is it. Hyperspin is officially booted and ready to go with the joysticks, okay? You can kind of see it right there. When we started, there was a little bit of a maybe five second delay. That's because in all honesty, there is some stuff still loading. If I was to have skipped the cutscene of Hyperspin, it would have been even longer. So it's always a good thing to kind of let Hyperspin do its thing. Again, we're going to be looking at each individual emulator. I'm going to be talking about, you know, classics. We're going to be talking about pinball. And the biggest thing out of this that I'm still shocked about is like the Wii U, how it plays. I'm, I'm even blown away by this system. Um, but again, real quick, just going through it. Hyperspin is loaded up. We got our PC games. We got our arcade classics. So real quick, just for kicks, we'll probably load up some Street Fighter just for the hell of it. Just to show you guys real quick. Again, you hold down the joystick right to jump to a letter. We're gonna load up some Super Street Fighter. And always like the first time you load up like MAM, MAME, whatever you wanna call it, it might take a second. One button and one button only. We're gonna get our loading screen. Let me bump up the volume. Again, see that? One button and one button only. Loading complete. It's gonna give us our full screen. Sometimes this does give you a little bit of error. It just says press any key. That's just the ROM, CHD related stuff. It always happens even on my Pi builds. So real quick, again, we got our coins. Got player two, we're all set. We're able to have some fun. We're able to have some action. I'm bored. We hit the exit button right here. Brings us back to the main menu. And as you can see, we're back into it. We could exit out. We could load up another type of game if we want. Let's do just for kicks the NES. And again, I'm pretty confident that we have this thing set and perfectly running. As you can see right there, Super Mario World 3. I'm going to press 1. i got to find different games, but these are classics that I like. See, once you load up like one emulator, now it's good to go. So right now we're, we're loading up the NES. I forgot what emulator I used for the NES. But boom, there we go. Keep in mind, again, Super Nintendo and the NES. As you can see right now, that originally on the controller, you had to press the start button. That's how you made it work. So as you can see, we have full screen. I always stretch my screens. I always love to stretch my screens. And right now we are doing one-handed. We're gonna run it out if I can. Basically, again, I'm bored, we exit out. One button exit, it's gonna bring you back into the hyperspin. And as you can see right there, we are set. Morris is bored, we're ready to shut down the computer. We're just gonna exit, exit. As you can see right now, we are not using a keyboard. I'm not using a mouse. Right now we're back to our desktop. There is some things we're gonna look at later on as far as the desktop. Morris is done playing for the day. All he has to do is one button and one button only, and the system has shut down. Ladies and gentlemen, the budget beast hyperspin six terabyte edition. I'm even mind blown by this amazing stuff. Look at that. Again, there is still power going to the LEDs and the monitor. It's just right now the computer itself is off.
Now I got called from an employee, so I'm gonna press the button one more time again. One time and one button only. The fans in the back are so powerful that you could actually feel the air coming out of this. It's like the little gaps. You actually feel the air. It is actually pretty nice to feel. Again, check it out. We're gonna actually load it again. Hopefully no employee calls me. We're gonna do a whole let it run kind of thing. Again, I do have hyperspin set to boot after one minute thanks to the task manager. Again, this is Windows 10. Windows 7, you could really boot directly into it, but this is Windows 10. There's nothing I could do about it. Again, you just got a little bit of a thing you have to wait for it, okay? Now, for example, right now, as you can see, like, you know, we booted again. This was pretty much faster than the one before. Um, but again, it's set to one minute. You need this one minute. Um, as you can see right now, like it, it's still loading something and the GTX, um, like whatever it is, uh, what do you call it? Um, the 1050 Ti has like this experience thing in the background that loads up. You actually see a black loading screen, that uh, black loading ring, that is actually for the 1050 Ti. So keep in mind, it is a computer. It's a regular computer. It still has to boot up and it still has to run through its regular processes just to you know be at normal speed and boots up. So again, we do have to run our GeForce um, drivers and our programs and that does need some time. So again, one minute set. We have our volume up on this one again. No keyboards, no mouse. There was the loading, there it is right there. So the loading on this one loaded before hyperspin and now it should be a pretty quick load up. There we go. Again, I am not, oh, there we go, see? It's still kind of loading, there we go. That's why I'm trying not to edit. I'm not gonna hide stuff. I don't wanna be named a fraud. Again, I personally would rather you not skip this screen only because you still need it to load. It's a pretty cool thing. I was gonna make a, a custom video, but whatever, it's fine for hyperspin. And now let's see. Four, five, five seconds. There you have it, and now the joysticks are fully operational and we are set. There you have it again, hyperspin is set. Quick overview, you could take a look at the build when we did this and what's inside of it. Again, we are running a Dell Optiplex on this. This clocked in, I believe at 20,000 and like 300 games, the extra terabyte was added for more PC games. So keep that in mind again, check it out. We're gonna do a lot of videos, guys. Stay tuned. We're gonna go right now into actual emulators and all that. Now, the one big thing to keep in mind about this specific build and really any hyperspin build or whatever you wanna call it, I don't know about big box, but the one thing you have to keep in mind is about the PC games, executables. I mean, this right now is running from an INI file. So there is an a, something called an AHK, which sometimes when you do boot from hyperspin, the AHK file doesn't boot in time and you might get an error message from hyperspin. In reality, it does boot, it just takes a while. The best example, and I'm gonna show you that when we do a PC game kind of build out of this, uh, a PC game kind of video for this thing, is we're gonna talk about PC games, but Street Fighter V, I'm just gonna do it real quick. One button and one button only. Again, uh, the executable file on this is gonna load up like a Street Fighter V symbol. You're gonna see it, it, it gets pretty nuts, it's pretty, it gets pretty crazy, so here we go. The computer tells you loading complete and here's what happens, usually what happens. Now it's like still searching, it's waiting for like the screen to get taken over. It might happen on this, we're gonna do it live right now. No, Street Fighter V is booting and we are not gonna get an AHK file on this. So as you can see, it's like set for like after 20 seconds, if it's not feeling anything, it will cancel out real quick. I mean, again, I know I'm joking around, but real quick, this right here, is Xbox X360CE. It thinks the arcade sticks are an Xbox controller. So it's just like this, so ABXY. So this is ABXY. So it literally thinks that we are running Xbox controllers. Let's do versus on this real quick. We're gonna just go back, close this, proceed to match, and proceed to match on this. Again, two players. Street Fighter V, I really should have done this on the PC one, but this is like the best part of this. <laughs> this is the reason why we do what we do. Again, as you can see, I'm able to flip through. We got Ken. Great stuff. I mean, again, I'm mind blown by this. I shouldn't even be doing this in this specific video, but just to show you guys real quick. The real reason I was talking about this is because I highly suggest the PC games are run actually on the desktop from the desktop. So I'm gonna just show you that real quick. We're just gonna skip this if I can. 
I mean, again, I always show Street Fighter V because this is such a graphic intense game. I mean, it is beautiful. There's a one hand that I do, and you guys can't even see it, but let's do it. So now real quick, we're gonna exit out. Just to show you again what I was talking about as far as the desktop mode on this. So we're gonna exit. Once you exit, you are back into hyperspin. Very fast, very nice. We're gonna exit out. We're gonna exit out of hyperspin. And basically, again, my suggestion is that if you are looking to play PC games specifically, I do have a folder right here for all the PC games. You go into it, and now you don't have to worry about Hyperspin doing an AHK file kind of thing. Again, stay tuned for an actual in-depth PC game kind of thing. But even on this little desktop here, we even have Fortnite and we have Apex Legends. I don't have that running in Hyperspin only because you need to run like Epic Games Launcher for it, yada, yada, yada. Again, guys, stay tuned for a lot more videos. We're gonna go in depth. You're gonna see him coming rapid fire on you. This way, Morris can officially pick up his long awaited bar top. Vic VP, Game Case Arcades. I'm gonna shut the computer down one more time. One button and one button only. There you have it. And yes, that is an arcade button. Game Room Solutions button, just like that button.